Hello, I'm Susan Rushton and this is Lifelong English Major. I still need to, I, this is my fourth one I believe, and or maybe my third, I can't remember. Um, and in the past, I had two, two shows and one of them, every, maybe once a year I would bring in some people who, who, who wrote, who write and, and talk, and we would talk about books. And that was once a year, maybe. And finally I thought, this is ridiculous. I, I want to talk about books and people who are involved with them. That's why I call it Lifelong English Major, because that's what I am. And I, first of all, I want to tell you about a book, Peter S. Beagle, The Innkeeper's Song. This is a, I love Peter Beagle. He's a fabulous writer and I love this book. And the, this is about several people, but the primary one is, is Lal. Lal Kams, no, Lal Kamsen, Kamsalal, sleek and lean and fearless, sailor Lal, swarcane Lal, Lal alone prowling the skis, seas and alleys of the world for her own mysterious delight. She is, a, she is a storyteller, and in this movie, no, in this book, she gets into trouble. She's, she's about to be killed, but then she realizes that this guy needs a, wants to hear a story. And that's her job. The, a guy who's after her is from an organization, a, a place who would, uh, people who would interrupt a wedding, abandon a harvest, or simply forget to die in order to hear another tale about something that once happened to somebody somewhere. So she tells a story, she tells him a story, and, and she's, she's convinced, yeah, I've got him, I've got him. I can, she was thrilled. She, it, it, she had. She was trembling deeper than any of anything else. I can still do this. She's thinking, what I was made to do, it has not left me. I can still tell a story. And she gets the better of him because she can tell a story. The innkeeper's song. Please consider it. It's beautiful. And he has another book out called "I'm Afraid You've Got Dragons." I need to get that. My guest today, after all that, the, the, the reason we're here is my guest is Susan Korn. Susan, Hi. thank you for joining me. Thank you. She is president of Gold Country Writers. And if you're at all interest in, interested in writing in Auburn or writing around Auburn or seeing this, and want to want to write more or write goldcountrywriters.com. Can I give them your email? Sure. Okay. Susan Korn, K O R N, Susan, K O R N, 130 at yahoo.com. Susan, thank you very much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me. What is Gold Country Writers? It's a wonderful group of people. I have spent my entire career going to meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and this and, and, and including and, and, and including one. Gold Country Riders. However, they they really are passionate about writing. They're a very intelligent group of people. They're very caring. And uh, it's it's wonderful to be among a group of good people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just love it. They're I've been there for 10 years. 10 years. And I haven't had any severe conflicts or upsets. Uh, I've made lifelong friends. I've even met one or two earth angels mm -hmm. that I believe are angels on this earth. Oh, nice. They just bring nothing but love. Wonderful. So this is a beautiful group, and if you're passionate about writing, if you question whether you can write a book, this is the place to come to, because we'll make it happen for okay. you. Okay. We'll make it happen. If you care enough, we'll make it happen. Okay. Good. Um, why do you think it's important, this, this group? Well, for me, it changed my life, and that's hard to believe in some ways, but when I moved up here, I was from the Bay Area, mm -hmm. 
And I wrote five books in five years. Mm -hmm. Four books in five Good years. Good for you. Four wow. books in five years. Because I knew no one. I stayed in the house and was in front of the computer. And after four books in five years, I said, Susan, you better get out and meet somebody. <laughs> Lucky me, I met the Gold Country Writers. Yeah. And it's changed my life. How? It's inspired me. It's given me a, a will to go on. I recently went through a divorce. Mm. And that was very, very painful. But I, I have such lovely friends there that, I mean, I got scammed. And I had no money. They closed all my banks, everything, for three days. One of the Gold Country Writers members just said, Susan, here. And she gave me $100. I have never been homeless financially in my life yeah, yeah. <laughs> until that moment when yeah. she was great. And I've had people call me just to say, how are you doing? How do you feel? And uh, I can't say enough why it's important. It changes who you are. Okay. It brings, you know, one of my passions in life is to help others reach their fullest potential. In writing? And writing will help. Uh -huh. You reach your fullest potential okay. in life, your self-actualization. I never thought I'd write four books. I couldn't even write a complete sentence until I got there. And, well, but but wait a minute. What, before before you came here, you wrote five books. Yes. Four books. But five but years. what I mean is to learn about writing. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I mean, I, I we do every third Wednesday. We have an educational. We have an educational speaker that comes and they talk about everything you can think of about writing. How to do a presentation, how to write an introduction, how to write a conclusion, you name it on writing. And that is free to the public mm -hmm. as well as to our members. Even even if you aren't a member of right. Gold Country Writers, it is you free can come to, the to these public. things. Yes. Okay. And we learn so much. We learn formatting. Um, we learn a lot. What is formatting? Formatting is how you write your book, you know. Um, what, your, what your book looks what like? What your book looks ah, like, yeah. the print of it, where you, uh, where is it important to put a paragraph and to start a new to mm -hmm. topic and how it should flow. You know, uh, formatting has a lot to do with flow, okay. I think. Okay. With how we reach from one thing to another. Mm. And... Uh, it, 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 if it's not formatted and it's all essay form, oh. <laughs> you, you, you lose it. Yes. You, know, you lose yeah. no emphasis. So now you are you you've been lip, th 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 tapping, th th thumbing through this book. Mm -hmm. So hold that up for for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, this is Terror Highway 19, 193. and is that by you? Yes, it is. Okay. I never planned on writing this book. But what is it? Okay. This Can happened it July, uh, January 2nd, 2009. Not long ago. Not yeah. that long ago, where I thought I was going to a movie with my husband, and we drove a That was your plan? That was our plan, because I was having surgery on Monday. Little did we know, we drove a half hour, uh, a half a mile from our home. The fog was so thick that I said, I think we should turn back. He said, I think you're right. At that moment, January 2nd, during the holidays, a man hit us head on, mm. oh. going, both of us going at least 45 miles oh. an hour. Oh, gee. And uh, our life changed at that yeah, moment. Yeah, I can imagine. At that moment, your whole life stopped. It's hard for people to believe, but when that person hit our car, I knew they were gone and I felt their energy rise. I did. And uh, my husband died three times. I lost the use of my left arm. Mm. We were not airlifted because the fog was so bad. And we were driven by ambulance to Sutter and I wrote this book out of the terror of what happened. And I'll never forget, it took eight times of the jaws of life to hit our truck to get us out. And the fireman that showed up was from Georgetown. I love you, Georgetown. <laughs> Poor cool, couldn't make it through the, the fog. But he came to my window, and I remember when you're in a bad accident, 
put your windows down. So I immediately rolled my window down. He came to the window and he said, Ma'am, my name is Ryan and I'll be here to help you until more people come. And it was a message, I believe, because my grandson's name is Ryan. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you're here, buddy. You're here for me and you're the right one. Yeah. And when I asked what happened to the other person, they said, ma'am, he's gone. Mm. And I, I felt that energy leave. Wow. wow. When the moment that impact. And uh, unfortunately, I, I had quite a bad injury. So we stayed in nursing homes for months. Two surgeries on an arm. My husband had multiple surgeries. Mm. Uh, and uh, it affected him quite badly. Yeah. And so I had to write this book for people when your life changes in a heartbeat and a bomb goes off in your house. Huh. So it's a great book. Uh, it talks about resilience. All my books kind of talk about resilience. <laughs> but it talks about how you recover from that and what you can do when you're bedridden. Mm -hmm. All the things you can do when you're bedridden to inspire yourself to go on. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that book never I never thought I'd write that book, yeah. but it came from just Your heart. needing to help people. Yeah. How long did it take you to, to write it? I don't recall, but it was very quick. Wow. It was very fast that book. Um, I've written books that have taken three years to write yeah. because I wrote it with nine people. And when you write with other people oh. <laughs> it takes forever. Yeah. I asked for eight pages. One girl sent me seventy five. Mm. We got it down to eight pages with the letter back saying, I think you should write your own book, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but So yeah. this this other book, these, this other book you wrote? This book here. Well, excuse me. Yes. You, were, you mentioned another book that you oh, wrote yes. with eight people. Nine people. Yeah. That, nine people. Um, what was that about? That book is called uh, Soul Sisters Come On To My House. A book about cultural sensitivity and human kindness. Mm. And, uh, and like when I said I wrote two books. This is my first, this was my last, but the two in between were for corporate America. Okay. Okay. And those, uh, it's about, you know, you don't have to go to lunch with someone. You don't have to call them up if you're a work partner. You don't have to be personal. Mm. But you do have to recognize each other. Yeah. And you do have to understand the differences between each other so you can work together mm -hmm. and become a team. Yeah. And this is how n nine women of three different cultures, Caucasian, Hispanic Americans, and um, African Americans, mm -hmm wrote this book together oh, on their adversities and what they go through in life to oh. make it. Okay. Good. Okay, then now I see something else, The Brown Rabbit. And what is that? Well, this is really the book that got the other four going, the other three going. Okay. <laughs> I never thought I'd write four. Um, when I think of this book here, I was about 20, in my 20s and I remember working at Kaiser San Francisco and I said to the doctor I'm going to write a book before I'm 35 well he don't said, put oh, it sure. <laughs> he, he just smiled at mm -hmm. me but I wrote this book at 53 took a time <laughs> uh, took a little time yeah. and it's a memoir about my life Okay. And from, 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 from childhood. To it, it's act and the reason I wrote the book was not for the public. It was for my grandchildren. So when I'm gone, they can read this and say, if Grandma can do it, I can do it too. Okay. And well, it's a true book about inspiration. It goes back historically about my family, but then it goes into my childhood. Unfortunately, it was a very dysfunctional childhood with a lot of neglect and a lot of uh, domestic violence and abuse. Mm. And uh, Yet you survived. Yes. And you, you I learned at age are. six, if I'm going to make it in this world, i got to trust myself, only myself. So uh, you it, remember it was a traumatic... You remember thinking that at six? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember so much, but it had to be told 
because this is the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the truth through my eyes and my brain, okay, and what I had to go through. And it doesn't stop up until about age 33, mm. all that dysfunction, until you finally learn who you are in this world. And at 33, I said, I have a voice, mm -hmm. and I have a right, mm -hmm. and I'm going to use it. Good. So here I am. Good. <laughs> Wonderful. Wow. So she's, you've written five books? Four. Four. I'm on my fifth now. Okay. Or my sixth. I've got two going. Actually, i got three going. <laughs> this sounds like a writer. <laughs> but i got one for sure. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. So, and so you're, you're, you're working on one for sure, but you're working on also three. Um, and, and, have, were you writing them before you got involved in um, Gold Country Writers? No. Are you writing them before you are, I, because you are? It, 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 it inspired me to write these. One, I'm writing something very different. I call myself a truth writer because I write just as I see the truth, facts and truth. Mm -hmm. This one, I'm trying to put a spin on a novel, mm -hmm. and I'm. It's going to take me a while because I'm trusting Gold Country writers to okay. help me. All those people that have written novels, mm -hmm. we have over 80 members, wow. and uh, I, I'm looking for that help. Yeah. The other two books I can write on my own, mm -hmm. okay. with a lot of research. Yeah, yes, and they can tell you about where course of research is, and, right. and or at least move. What about, and, and have you ever thought of, and... Well, that's what our cry -teep groups are about. Yeah. And at Gold Country Writers, we have about 13 cry -teep groups with about eight different genres. When you say, you have 13 what groups? cry -teep groups. cry -teep? Yeah, critique. Critique. Maybe. Critique groups, okay. You gotta watch my mouth because I have problems <laughs> okay. speaking. You, this is something you need to know. I don't know if it needs to go on, but this is something you need to know. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I, I learned to read by memorization. Hmm. No one taught me how to read. Okay. No one at home ever showed me how to read. Oh dear. And when I was in the second book in class, I said, I got to get to the A book. I'm in the B book. But the only way I learned to read was by full memorization hmm. because I couldn't understand the vowels. Ah. I, I didn't get the pronunciation. That's why I said critique wrong. I, okay. I say things wrong sometimes. Okay. All right. And yet here you are. And here and, I am. And you're 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 a writer. I'm a writer. And you can you can make mistakes and so <coughs> you can make mistakes and still be a writer. Well, there's this there's a saying you can make huge mistakes as long as you edit well. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's the thing about writing the book, you gotta edit it right. Yes, yes. I've, I've, I'm, I'm convinced that writing is difficult, but editing is better. Editing is, is easier until you don't recognize it, until you, until you miss something. Uh -huh. mm. Well, part of the problem I found with that is with spell check. You put the word we or were and they pass it. Be or you put we and they pass it and you mean were. Mm -hmm. uh. And so you have to, that's why you read a book at least eight times before you send it out. Yeah, you know. at least. But the editor is the quality. He, they add the quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you say there are eight groups in in Gold right. Country Writers? Mm -hmm. oh. Eight journals. And oh, eight groups that do what? Well, uh, we they can meet all different, many. We have eight. So some meet at home, some meet at night. Uh, it's in our newsletter, which is called The Dispatch, and that goes out once a month. And we have a website, goldcountrywriters.com, and they will list all those genres and when all those groups meet. Mm -hmm. But most times, the real core is every second Wednesday and every fourth Wednesday at the Rose Room at the um, City, City Hall. Hall. Yeah. And you bring five uh, double-spaced pages of your work, and uh, we sit in, there's usually four different groups, and everyone gets a chance to read their work, and then you get positive 
constructive feedback mm -hmm. from others that are in the same kettle of fish that yeah. you're <laughs> working hard. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Um, well, what advice do you have for writers? I say either either in who are either in Gold Country Writers or not in Gold Country. Well, they writers. say never quit. Don't ever give up. Every no gets you one step closer to yes. And that's what in do you doing. Mean? What, like, what does you that know, mean? people say I send my book out and it keeps coming back rejected. Uh huh. But every no, eventually you'll get a yes. And these are words and inspiration words that I live by and I try to teach people. You got to see it to believe it in order to achieve it. You have to see it to believe it in order to achieve it. So you have to see that book. Okay. And you have to believe you can do it in order to achieve it. Okay. So never quit. You know, I never thought I'd write four books. Good grief. Now, I would have said I win the lotto before I write four books. <laughs> you know. But you've got to have that passion, that drive, that willingness to see yourself through, mm -hmm. you know? And Gold Country Writers will help you make that happen if you have the drive for it. Mm -hmm. And I am so proud of being there for 10 years because I have seen people grow and bring their five pages in. And it's a hard copy now and it won an award. Oh, good. And that hasn't happened just once. That's happened a few times. Oh, good. And I'm I'm so <laughs> happened to me. Yeah, it you. To Phil. And I'm so happy for <laughs> Phil. I was so hoping that that winner would be a Gold Country writer yeah. member, and it was Phil. It was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And you know that's another thing we do. We do contests. Uh, every fifth Wednesday, we'll do an event. Uh, we'll do uh, a Halloween party, mm -hmm. or we'll do a hats off, hundred word contest. And hats off means we all duff our hats mm -hmm. to the winner. You know? Oh, nice. And uh, so we do events, we do parties. It's a fun social group yes. who loves to write and wants to achieve something. Yes. And we, we, the, th the three of us in this in this small room know what it is about writing. Mm -hmm. When you're writing, you're alone. Yes. And the more you write, the more often you're alone. You're alone. Well, that's what I said. <laughs> you and you can't write with with ton, tons of when you're when you're among tons of people. So you have to be by yourself. That's right. And this I am, and the fact that. That writers are, have to be alone to write is a good reason to belong to Gold Country Writers because there are so many of you, and you meet so often. That's right. It, people and we're don't... very successful in what we're doing. Good. I mean, I'll say it. We're a very successful uh, book group, organization, nonprofit organization. Yeah. Um, the one thing about being alone. It's, it's funny because I equate that to being a cake decorator. I went to cake decorating class once. When I came home to decorate that cake, that everybody had to be silent. <laughs> I had to concentrate. And, and it's the same as uh, an artist in doing a painting. Mm -hmm. You're solo. You're by yourself and you're into it. Yeah. And the one thing about writing is you discover things about yourself you didn't know were there. You weren't aware that was going to make you cry. Or that was going to make you stop. Or that's going to make you think, how am I going to portray this in such detail that the reader feels it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and it takes a lot of thought and, and can't be a lot of noise. And right. All of that. Yeah. But if you don't ask me what my favorite book was as a child, I'll die because I've been trying to memorize it. <laughs> well, okay. Susan Torn, <laughs> president of Gold Country Writers. GoldCountryWriters.com. What is your favorite book of when you were a child? I'm so happy to tell you. <laughs> I've been practicing. Yeah. It's Uncle Remus. Really? Okay. Song of the South. Okay. Why is that? That was my first picture book. My okay. cousin Kathy, who I love dearly, gave me my first picture book. Okay. And I loved it. Why did you love it? 
Because she gave it to you. Because I wanted it. I loved all those pictures, and I loved the story, and everything was so happy. Yeah. Yeah. zippity doo dah. <laughs> Can't beat it. <laughs> yeah. And you, you don't, one doesn't find it anymore. No. Lately. But it's here. It'll Good. always be here. Good. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. What is the hardest... Okay. Back to writing and, and not reading. But... But what is the hardest part about writing, do you think? I have to think the hardest part about writing. Uh, for me, the hardest part about writing is to be fair. What do you mm. mean? To be fair. To be fair to every person I'm writing about. Mm. Uh, that memoir, that memoir okay. uh, was written with a pen name. Mm. Because I thought some people would feel that isn't it. That's not how I see it. I'm angry. So I wrote that book with my heart. And I think you have to write every book with your heart. Your heart has to be in the right place. And you have to give everybody fair justice. Mm -hmm. You have to say if someone beat you, maybe they were beat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doesn't mean you forgive them. No. But it helps you, you can, try you to understand to that whole them, thing. You, so how do you, you know, it's really about being fair. It really is. It's about being fair and being truthful and seeing things the way you see them and what kind of impression it left on you. Post-traumatic stress disease disorder is mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand it, but it, when we see people and we meet people and we find out somebody's very different from them than yourself, I want to get to know that person. Mm -hmm. I want to get to know you. Yeah. I want to know what you're all about. <laughs> and if I read your book or read your writing, mm -hmm. I'll know who you are. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you're working. You're working on some fiction, right? Well, uh, a novel. That's that's fiction. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's going to be fiction in some ways, just to shorten it because I don't want it to be too long. I want it to be about reflections of a woman's mind, of mm. women of our age. Mm. I don't think there's enough written about it, and I'm having an awful hard time coming up with a title. And I came up with something very close, and it may stay, and it's called Takeaway. Mm. Takeaway, because at this age, there's so many takeaways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Um, do you have one spe specific thing that you like best about Gold Country Writers? The people. The people. I love the people. It's just going in there, and you get hugs, you get hellos, you get, do you want coffee? Somebody brings donuts. Uh, Somebody brings their vegetable garden, uh, mm -hmm. and it's it's full of warmth and loving kindness. Good. And you know where do you find that everywhere for year after year after year? Yeah. And if I have a problem, I'll confront somebody with it, and it's usually another leader who wants to be leader at that time. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're not chairman, I am. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but we understand each other, yeah. and we respect each other. Oh, and, good. and that's so important. Yeah, I agree. But I love the people. That's wonderful, and especially if you're, if you're all by yourself writing, what you need periodically is is that a connection. group of people who, who, who love each other. All right, this I have been talking to Susan Korn, who is president of Gold Country Writers, GoldCountryWriters.com. And her, her email, Susan Korn 130, Susan K O R N 130 at yahoo.com. And this has been a lifetime, lifelong English major. And this has been a pleasure. Thank you, Susan. Well, thank you. Yes. And thank you for watching. <laughs>